Right, good afternoon. I'm here in Marlborough, which is just south of uh, Swindon in England, for those of you who are overseas. My name is Brian Gerrish, if you haven't met me before, and we've been having a meeting today talking about the state of Britain and what can be done to stop the emerging one world government. So it's been a very interesting day and we've had a lot of very good um, ideas put forward around the table and people are getting very excited that the truth is really starting to come out. So what we thought we'd do is a little video clip and have a little bit of discussion about the sorts of things people are talking about. Now I've got Alan with me who's uh, recently put forward some ideas about using the music industry in order to particularly get younger people interested in what's happening and what the message is. So can you tell us a bit more about that, Alan? Yes, certainly. I mean, I think most, most of us know that the, the music industry has been decimated by, by not just the digital uh, digitalization of music and how it can be easily copied and everything else, but also by design. Uh, for political reasons as well. And, can, you, and, can you explain that a bit more? Why, why do you think the music industry has been... Well, I, I think more and more, the big, more and more, like everything else, more and more um, has been concentrated in, into fewer hands or companies in, in this case. So it used to have like lots and lots of record companies, independent radio stations, record companies, and over the last two, three decades, that's dwindled down to a handful and now it's even more so. But the whole industry suffered. So A, we need to revitalise the whole industry uh, of, of music, you know, music production, songwriting, uh, live shows and all the rest of it. But also what we're doing here today, of course, is to put entertainment with education and that's precisely what we've we've been discussing so right. do you think young people are responding to um to, to music and a can i call it a political message you're trying to do two things at once does it well, i think i think music's always had that role i mean when you go back to the 60s with bob dylan what we used to call protest songs and i and i actually see that coming back in a very very big way it's already started with bands like muse um, I can't remember the name of their, uh, their record, but it was a huge record. And I can see that being popularised. And this is what normally happens. Things yeah. are sort of banned. They go underground, and then it all catches up with the mainstream. A good example of that, is, of course, is hip-hop and rap music. Right. So you, you really think that if we start getting this message out, other people are going to pick up on it? Oh, absolutely. They'll jump on the bandwagon. Was it Uprising? Was that the music? That's one? it, Uprising. Oh, that's, that's OK. That's Thank not, you. Not too bad I'm, for I'm me, because I'm an oldie. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the one who's supposed yeah. to know and, and the names. And you've been writing some material yourself. I have, yeah. Something to do with bathtubs. <clears throat> that's right. Lizards in the bathtub. Uh, it's just a bit of a silly idea, but um, it, it's pretty deep, actually, as a record. Um, you can see the powers that be sometimes called that are fighting amongst each other. I think they're very much on the run. I think their backs are against the wall, which is dangerous. But I think that now we can make a final push and get the job done. And we have to do it together, and we will. Yeah, well, I think that's one of the most exciting things that's come out of the meeting today, because we've had about 30 five people here, I would guess, mm -hmm. and lots of different ideas, and lots of different ideas about, initially about who we're fighting, um, but by the end of the day, people are coming into agreement that they've all got different ideas of what we can do, different initiatives, but each of those initiatives have got value, and I think this idea of mixing music in is a, is a powerful one. Right, so the, the, the main thing of today is that people have been coming out with their ideas as to, to what's actually happening in the country. And I think, um, Alan, one of the things that we've seen is that uh, people have been pointing the finger at our own government. There's a lot of talk about the European Union, but if we say who's caused the problem, we can look back across politics in our own country for a large number of years. And it doesn't matter which political party we're looking at, I think we're right in saying that they're all rotten and it's been pointed out that if we look at the quality of the people we've got in power, we've got liars, cheats, fraudsters, expenses, scamsters. I and I, yeah. Traitors, I think, as well. Treason. Yeah. We're talking about high treason. Traitors, 
in our government in the highest places as well. But uh, what you just touched on there as well is about terminology. I think a lot of people get very confused about all these different words we have and, and they, their eyes just glaze over. If you keep it simple to a control system and the language simple like that, people are, I think, more receptive to, to those sorts of things. But yes, indeed, the, the big problem we have is, in our, is right in our own government and that has to be dealt with, and it will be. Right, so, well, I, I certainly agree with that because it's a message that we've been trying to get out in the UK column very strongly. And the latest edition, which I might be able to hold up in a minute, but we've been looking at how the uh, Conservative government is using behavioural reframing in order to change views and opinions of the public. And they've been doing that in cahoots with the French. And uh, the most sinister thing is that we're seeing the British government actually publishing documents showing that it has been training public departments first before it uses those departments to reframe the public. So this is very, very sinister stuff. Most people have no idea it's going on, but we've now got a government that's prepared to use raw psychological propaganda as a weapon to change views in the country. Not just that, they're masquerading as, as, as uh, sometimes as, as, um, as a charity, uh, charitable organisations, and using taxpayers' money as well in this process. And I know that you've been exposing this one particular group in particular, and they're not just in this country, they're all, you know, they're heavily active in other... Yeah, this is common purpose. Common purpose. Uh, Fabian Society, they're all kind of linked. Yeah. And the, the other one that we, we've been particularly interested in is Demos. And the, the interest factor for that is very simple, that if you go back to the history of Demos, it's Marxist-based. The key uh, creators of, of Demos were Marxist. And we can now show, and we have shown in the paper, that the main advisers clustered around Cameron, Clegg, Francis Maud are Marxist-based. So a very simple question for people out there is to ask their local MP why we've now got Marxist policy makers uh, guiding the Westminster government. In a conservative and, government. Well, it's conservative government, but the interesting thing is that in the article we've produced, which shows that the Franco-British Council was involved in setting up policy, of course, we're going back across the years, Labour and conservative governments. So there's, there's a definable conspiracy. It isn't theory. The evidence is there to show this government and other governments have conspired against the people. And, and the, uh, sorry, I'll just, just finish this point, but the fact that we, we are showing that the UK government is prepared to use a French neuro expert, i.e. a brainwashing expert for the layman, in order to change our opinions is, is just quite horrific. Nobody voted for that, I don't think. You couldn't yeah. make it up, really. You couldn't. And I, I don't know if any of uh, you guys know, but have you ever seen the logo for the, um, the Fabian Society? Um, if you see the logo, you'd be shocked. And it's a the wolf in sheep's clothing. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. So, yes, it's not theory. It's conspiracy fact. And Brian and many others are, are working all the hours to try and educate people about it. We're going to come together with the entertainment and the education and do something special so that uh, it's not just all education and, and you know, that it, it's pretty difficult to swallow a lot of this information but hopefully we can um, put a spoonful of sugar with it so the medicine go down. Yeah and we, we think that we could do this on quite a big scale because obviously if we look at some of the bigger if we look at some of the bigger rock concerts and maybe there's 50 or sometimes 80,000 people there and you think to yourself my goodness wouldn't it be great to start to get in some facts to say enjoy the music but you need to wake up to the one world government because otherwise it's going to be your last concert prop, um, possibly Absolutely. Do, do you think we can put this together on a big scale i think we can do it we, we can we certainly uh, we're not going to do it on a big scale straight away but we will certainly start with something manageable and if that works sky's the limit i think that it can it can really take off and i think it will be copied everywhere 
we would want it to be copied. Yeah. Now, one of, one of the things that I think is very exciting at the moment is that people who are out there fighting are now starting to slowly but surely come together. So we, we've got, um, we've had the AV events from Ian Crane, which have been very successful, the ones he's run in this country. Yeah, uh, yeah Jim Core now got involved. So we're now seeing um, good things happening in Ireland, which I think is a very special country because there's a lot of passion. And the Irish people know that in the short time they've been available, they've been involved with the European Union, they've been completely shafted. Okay. So we can see these events coming together. Um, we've got Alex Jones and the like, and many more people. now. Initially, they were all working in isolation. We're now starting to see people do joint shows, yeah. um, joint radio interviews. And I think that the more we start to see people coming together on stage to support each other, we're not going to, we're human beings, so we're not going to agree 100%. But if we agree on 90, 95%, we come from different backgrounds, we're seeing the same picture, that is going to be really powerful. And it's going to make people, I think, stand up and look. It's already it's it's already proving to be powerful already with the, uh, for want of a better term, um, guest sharing by uh, alternative or internet uh, radio programs, that sort of thing. But we want to make it. We, we want to take it a stage further into live events and much, you know, a much broader, a, a bigger event like that. That's what we want to see. Okay, now I know you've got some ideas on titles, but you might not want to talk about that well, live. The idea of a circus, a travelling circus. You want to tell us a bit more about that? <clears throat> well, I, I thought of the, you know, you get a bit for, with a circus, you get a bit for everybody. You get like the, the lions and the tigers and you get the clowns and stuff like that. And uh, that sort of, there's a variety about the idea of a circus, but also it's travelling as well and it could potentially go all over the world as well and it could just keep going you know it's a train that just won't be stopped in other words um, but also I, I saw I could envisage a colorful poster and that's we need a lot of that we need a lot of publicity yeah, so basically your your circus could mix the dark stuff uh, in with much lighter humor so that there's a balance for everybody that's which so right. sounds really good songs are supposed to be light yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that, 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 that's great well we, we are going to uk column and the british constitution group are going to do our bit to try and make this work with you and we are certainly looking to work with all the other people who are out there um get in touch with us yeah uh, and that, it, that includes, hopefully, some of the people who are all already well established. And I think this is, this is going to grow and grow. It's really exciting. So we look forward to it, chaps. OK, and if I might get a last-minute plug for the 2nd of April in Stoke-on-Trent, the British Constitution Group is looking to put on another, um, another conference. Um, we are really going to get into the nitty-gritty this time. There's been fantastic things happening in courts around the country where the uh, system is being challenged. Um, we are starting to see that statute law is being unlawfully used in administrative courts. We're seeing judges get very nervous. We're seeing them walk out of courts. And it's obvious that the scam of the judicial system is, is beginning to be exposed. So that is going on. We've got people now reporting treason in the police stations, and we know that ordinary policemen in their divisions yeah. have heard about it. We know that their masters and bosses are trying to block it. And we're also now starting for the first time to hear that, that MPs are beginning to get very nervous. And whilst everything we do is condoning a peaceful approach, I have heard that some of the MPs are getting worried that some of those people out there want to hang them, yeah. which I think is, is we're not quite ready for that. <laughs> this doesn't seem to be the right approach at the moment. But certainly there are members of the public who are so outraged at what's being done to them that they're prepared to to go on the streets with that sort of attitude. But what we believe at the moment is we want to keep people calm and orderly because the whole machinery of the other side is set up to contain violence on the street. So we don't want people doing that. We want them to, no, to rebel. Their hands, as we saw at G20, and people actually do get killed, even people that have nothing to do with the protests, uh, which I, I was horrified by. But um, let me make this clear. The 
traitors and the people who are committing treason are not the only ones who have nowhere to hide. It's also the people that work for them and, and all of them should be concerned about their future because the people will be woken up, they are being woken up in, in, in all sorts of creative ways and uh, uh, th this is inevitable, Brian, I think. Yeah, so it's coming, isn't it? The lizards are going to go in the bathtub and your plan once they were there was to do what? Pull the plug on them. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much. Thank you.